welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever gone through the ringer or great change, then do we have the Letting Go show for you. Today, we'll talk about letting go, giving up, and allowing for whatever comes your way, even the boo-boos of life. <laughs> that, plus, we'll talk about dead-end hikes, parking extravaganzas, trucks and driveways, heat, resi- heat waves and deluges, mm. generators and refrigerators, leadership, smarty pants, passive resistance, showing up, water, water everywhere, and what in the world, roo-roo on a couch has to do with anything. <laughs> so, welcome back to the show, CJ. <laughs> Are you ready to shine? <laughs> I am ready to shine. Woo! Woo! Okay, we need some chakra too, Michael. <laughs> Seems like there's some energy needed here. How are you? I am so, so excited to hear what you've been up to. We're doing great. We're rolling with a lot. There is a lot of moving pieces that get to be put in order. It has been a, I don't know when we last s- spoke, but it's been uh, um, so many beautiful challenges. And um, we're in South Dakota now. We started, of course, uh, Joshua Tree, or out by Joshua Tree, California, Yucca Valley specifically, Yucca Valley to Las Vegas to Carbondale, Colorado to South Dakota. And we are here either for another week or more, or through tomorrow. Um, we are rolling with everything, and we don't know. You, you get to book your, when you're in an RV and you go to campgrounds, uh, particularly this is the year of RVs. Uh, uh, with COVID last year, everybody got into RVs. You get to book months in advance, but because when we purchased the RV, the RV fell on the truck, and the truck was in the body shop for six weeks, there was no booking anything in advance. And so we're we're at the whim of the universe and cancellations. Oh, wow. And so this is 4th of July weekend that we're recording this. Will we be able to stay here tomorrow or not? No idea. Completely out of our hands. Wow. Okay, so the last time I spoke to you, you were in the process of going through your boxes and, like, packing up. That's a lot. It's been a while, like, almost, I think, so maybe three weeks or a month. I'll give you the briefest version, and then you can ask for more details. Okay. We got everything packed up into the RV as best as we could. First uh, first job is to go from California to uh, Colorado to empty storage units. Okay. Um, and to, to sell a vehicle that we were going to use as a tow vehicle last year. <laughs> for a different style of RV, which didn't work out, a, a, a Class A. Instead, we're now in this thing called a fifth-wheel toy hauler, much bigger RV. Uh, we uh, packed up. We got into the RV. We pulled out the driveway. We got stuck in the driveway. And we were stuck in the driveway in the desert, only partially able to get any electricity for cooling the animals on board for a day and a half. That was the start. We can go there. Then we got to Las Vegas where it was 120 degrees. (laughs) Had a a miraculous set of synchronicities. Stayed there a little extra time. Left, hit smoke and wildfires coming into Colorado. Got to Colorado to empty the storage units. And it was 105 plus degrees for emptying storage units, which now in Seattle, you know what that feels like. Um, And (laughs) then then, um, as we're emptying the storage units, it switched from... And a, you know, a 20 year drought to deluge and floods in and Colorado, in Colorado and a landslide right behind us as we left town. Oh, my uh, gosh. No joke. Highway closed both directions, but we made it through, got out to South Dakota and um, had to play the shuffle game of different spot here, different spot there for a few days. Along the way, we've had generators conk out. We've had refrigerator conk out. We've had the uh, uh, water overflow in the back of the RV. We've had all sorts of challenges, very, very minor boo-boo with the truck when I was trying to get things sorted. And Jessica, it's a two-person job. She had overheated. It was over 100 degrees out in Colorado. And first she almost backed me into a tree and then she gave up and I had to do it on my own. And, And all of this has just led to a level of let go with this. I guess it's a let go. Let's be honest. Let go and open thy wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another boo boo. I found out we're not alone. Alone. There may be a book already in existence. If not, probably we get to write it. Of a. Um, here's the things they didn't tell you when you get your RV. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, give me the top three of things that you're like, oh, when it's really hot. Is it is it the heat that's making everything break down? No, no. It's that these are not built well, and we got a top of the line, and they are just not built well. They need to fire every single engineer, every person who works on this, <laughs> and start from <laughs> scratch. I cannot believe how poorly, good RV, good RV, how poorly these things are made. Um so, but it's, there's a good old network, good old boys network of telling you how to run these things that you don't know. Mm. So you have a washer dryer, you have plumbing in the place and you figure, okay, I'm just going to wash some clothes and it's a great top of the line washer dryer. And wait a second, it's not draining properly. You check all the drains, you check everything. Mm. It looks okay. You run it again. Now you've got water backing up and you don't realize that what it didn't tell you is that there's an additional drain in the back of the RV that you weren't aware of that you thought was this handle, but it turns out was that handle. But nobody told you about that handle. Or you are driving and it's over 100 degrees out and you have a generator that you keep on that keeps the air conditioning running, but it turns out over 100 degrees, the generator has an auto shut off on it. And so it's shutting off every 30 minutes. So you're pulling off of the side of the highway to reboot <laughs> and restart generator they don't tell you uh, about this or that if you drive up a dirt driveway and down another one the difference in angle between the two driveways can cause your rv to rest on the back of your pickup truck or crush it if you're not careful and so just making a, a, a regular turn trying to take it wide and gentle between one driveway and another could crush your truck they don't tell you these <laughs> things Oh my gosh. Wow. So it's just like getting used to your new body, like your new, it's like. And the most interesting thing is because, so we purchased an RV that is designed, it's, it's almost 65 feet long when you include a uh, truck and RV. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a road train. We biased towards something that has incredible livability mm -hmm. rather than incredible uh, pack up and go ability. Right. So. Driving down the road, super phenomenally easy, mm. but getting into a parking spot and getting out is an endeavor. And it is about a two, two and a half hour endeavor to move between one spot to another. Wow. When we got in Colorado, we had to cobble together a bunch of one or two day reservations to make it 10 days. And it meant two to two and a half hours every one to two days of parking and unparking and unhooking and unhooking and very, very when you're parking a, a quarter million dollars worth of equipment, you get nervous because right. if you don't get it right, you're really opening your wallet. Wow. So that's one of the biggest learnings is we really want to find the reservations where we can t stay two, three, four weeks at a time rather than hopping from spot to spot. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. So if you, Fourth of July is going to be so hard. If you can't find a location during July 4th, God forbid, but if you can't, then what do you do? Like, can't you go to like Walmart parking lots and different yes, places? Exactly. You get to run your generator the whole time because uh, you're not plugged into electricity, but you can do it. So I, I'm convinced we'll be able to stay here. If not, there's another place close by, even though supposedly everything's full. Um, that we should be able to do that. Uh, I'm convinced of that while I'm saying that. I'm ready to turn my head to the side and go, Pookie, you should call on that backup place. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But there's a level of total and complete letting go. Yeah. Of, we, we were only going to spend a few days in South Dakota. Then we were going on to Michigan, to the Upper Peninsula, on the lakes there. Mm. The place we were looking at are full. Another one says first come, first serve. And then there's a bunch of places that look like they have uh, sketchy Internet. And, and running a show, I just don't want to deal with weak Internet. Right. Because that is, to me, there's nothing more unpro than trying to do an inter... Uh, 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 right. And, I just don't want to do that. So instead, I'm like, you know, we're out. We're here. Let's just stay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is so interesting. It is literally like the Camino where you're just like going however long you can walk. Because sometimes, you know, you're in pain, so you just can't or your body is breaking down. And 
there are people who are like, I just have to hang out at this hotel for a couple of days until it heals, you know, and you just, and you don't really, in, in, in your case, the two hours, who would have thought that's kind of an unexpected outcome? Because totally you, and because, because when you were traveling before the RVs, it was during a time when there was COVID where there are not as many people, I would presume, and it's winter time, so there's not all these summer vacations. So is this partly a result of the whole summer vacation phenomena? The summer vacation phenomena makes things full, certainly. The moving between spots is just the nature of, of what we have. There's a lot that gets to be packed up when you move. It is a very big vehicle the the uh truck is 22 feet long the rv is 44 feet long they kind of mate and overlap a little bit so you're probably at 62 63 even though i said 65 feet uh it's almost 14 feet tall so you got to watch for tree branches you've got to watch for vehicles you've got to watch for people you've got to watch for fire pits you've got to watch for stones and and then we also have i'm out recording the most magnificent thing about this rv is it has two decks on it and so I'm out on the patio deck, which is just wildly cool. But then I've got to re pack up the whole recording studio and everything. And plus, you've got plumbing that gets set up. So you plug up your plumbing to exterior pipes and you got to plug it back in. You've got uh, your exterior electricity. You've got to unplug that. So there's a lot that goes into it each time you go for takeoff to go to another spot. And then navigating around a campground is with such a big vehicle you get to take it extra 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 slow there is no rush if you're gonna rush you might as well call your insurance company and said i do another ten thousand dollars worth of damage wow it's coming you do not oh my gosh I, I i i just see this um i see this possibility of an rv um <laughs> YouTube channel with we, you being the star. We thought about it. I did, I did post on Upwork for an editor, but um, I don't know how to fit all the moving pieces. We've been recording some stuff, but I don't know how to fit all of the moving pieces of doing an extra show as well. We're really being pushed to do a Ruru show because people are loving him so much. And, really? And out on the road. Like I didn't take a photo this morning. He took a photo of us. We were stopped by animal control. Uh, you know, badge, the works, everything, so that he could get a picture of Ruru. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hero to all. We're like, oh boy. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Okay, and so what's Ruru on the couch all about? Well, Speaking of Ruru. A level, a let of, level of letting go, because we... We still have a little bit of panic in us from last year when we got kicked out of the one place we wanted to stay the winter, um, uh, presumably because of Ruru. Uh, mm. all, we were good through one morning. We wake up. Everybody's in love with us. And all of a sudden, we got a phone call saying, you need to leave now. Why? Right. Well, in the fine print, it says no farm animals. What? Uh, <laughs> he's, he's our emotional support rooster. Why are you kicking us out? But... <laughs> Um, so we get nervous when he crows. And so we, even though our, you really can't hear him more than a few feet away in the RV, but so we've gotten nervous with that and you can only lock him up so much yeah. for his naps and stuff. So like, I think it was yesterday evening or the evening before Jessica was taking a nap. I came in the house. He hadn't been in his soft dog kennel thing and he was up standing on top of the couch surveying his dominion <laughs> <laughs> watching over it all and he's like who me <laughs> and i'm like and what i'm learning is like yeah okay he shouldn't be on there all right next moving on <laughs> <laughs> letting go I, there's just like one too many things here <laughs> oh, oh michael yeah. so how um you say that and then you're in your write up letting go giving up and allowing for utter comes your way i mean how how have you um navigated this um period of just the unknown and unexpected we we went for a hike two days ago and this is probably a good example we went for a hike we had a narrow window of time before teaching a class 
Jessica needed to sleep when we were supposed to go, so I wrote up my notes early. I had a two-hour protocol before class. Instead, I was going to have to throw that out the window. Okay, one piece thrown out the window. Let's do things a little bit differently. Secondly, not sure where to go for a trail. Called up a local shop. They said, here's a very close trail. Here's where the gate is. Here's where you want to go. Um, okay, fine. We'll do that. Perfect, easy, done. We get there. We find the gate. It doesn't look right. We go hiking. We can't find the trail. Oh, wow. And you just can't find it. And so we doubled back and we doubled back. And first off, when you're walking with Ruru, you're walking with a rock star. Uh, Jessica would say akin to Brad Pitt. Everybody stops you. We love it, but every single person wow. must have their photo with Ruru. So we're not getting anywhere. We're not finding the trail. And finally we go, I give up. Let's just go back. And, and I said, well, can we drive up the road? Not a good negotiation, but how do you feel about we just drive up the road a few minutes and find a trail for another day? And so we decide to do that. We drive up the road. We see, of course, road 222, uh, dirt road off of that. So 222, we're going to have to take this. And there's a whole story about us selling mini for 22222 two, 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 and getting 222 two, two back from the 22222. Two, two, two. So, so there's road 222. Two, two, so we take that. And then there's a sign for a waterfall, only three quarter of a mile trail. And so we hop out of the car, no real time to spare. We're like renegotiating with ourselves what our buffer is. We go for the most amazing walk, show up at the most incredible waterfall, have the most blissful, fast paced walk and get back. And all was perfect. Mm. It was a total letting go of whatever we we're attached to, whatever we thought were going to happen. Something even better came out of it. And OK, there was a lot of a little discomfort. You have a buffer. You're not going to go that way. You have a protocol not happening today. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it just reminds me of when I was I don't remember if I even shared this with you. I think I did when I was in the Camino and I took a path. I decided to go visit this church and I took a path yep. that was completely, you know, my own path. And it said the Camino and it had like this, this, you know, um, all these signs, but yet um, it's kind of like when you're on the highway and there's like the business route and then yeah. like the fast route. And so I went on what I th was the business route. And when you're walking, you don't want to go on the business route <laughs> when you walk like 12 miles. You don't want to in the last juncture walk another six. So um, remember when I, I, I met that guy? <laughs> It's like totally lost in the city and I was trying to call a cab and I called one cab after another and one couldn't pick me up. And finally, some guy on the road who I think was a sanitation worker was walking by in an orange jumpsuit and he's like, you know, I can give you a ride. And I was like, uh, I'm not sure. But then he said, and I was like, OK, but um, he's like, and why don't you come back? Um, to my apartment because I want to change out of my jumpsuit and I was like I think I've seen this in some murder movie before and I was like I'm so desperate and I said okay I, I'll get a ride from you but you have to meet me right there in that parking lot and um, so I was ready to do this because I was like I don't know how I'm going to get to the next town and then right as um, he was walking to his apartment back to you know you know, to, like to firm up this whole deal where he's probably going to, you know, axe murder me. Um, <laughs> a cab came. The, axe. <laughs> the cab came and I had the most glorious day from that point forward. I had lost, I was kind of sh shooken up as a result of this mishap in navigating. And um, I just thought, wow, don't lose faith. You cannot lose faith because these little things are going to happen and if you lose faith in your and your ability to navigate all is lost because this was like you know halfway through the trip so yesterday um yeah. well we've had a lot of water challenges one of them is some big deluges out in colorado that killed the cycle computer um uh, on jessica's e-bike oh, no. and on my e-bike so you can't see how far you're going you can't see how much battery you have left you can't see anything First off, Bosch is going to take care of us, which is huge. And we're very thankful yeah, to nice. Trek, e, uh, uh, Trek Bosch e-bike. Bosch is taking care of us. So a big shout out and thank you to Bosch. But on that note, I'm out for a ride yesterday. I had just gotten the bike. Um, I didn't realize it was interesting. I, I took the bike, the, sh the bike to the shop for one thing. They did a whole bunch of other things. 
And, and there were some charges occur, uh, occurring with it. Usually I'd be like, well, why didn't you check with me first? But I'm like, okay, guess it needed it. But I took the bike out and they had missed one adjustment and it rode terribly. Oh, and bummer. so I'm out going into the woods, the gears are all skipping and I can't tell how far I can go before I'm out of battery. I stop at one person and ask for a tool. I get a little adjustment, but I actually made it worse uh. rather than better. And so I give up and I turn around and I head back for town and then I see a dirt road. And I'm like, well, I love dirt roads. <laughs> and while it's not in the direction I'm going and the bike is not running well at all, I'm going to take it. Right. This is like probably the last thing that you should think about doing because you're like, the bike is already kind of ricocheting all over the place, but I'll go on a dirt road. I'm crossing yeah. it to ricochet more. Half a mile down the dirt road, a couple guys from Colorado would who said, no, we don't have any tools. And then they're like, wait, wait a second. Actually, we do. Got me hooked up. Got it. I got everything adjusted. Took me down a trail that brought me exactly where I wanted to go in exactly the right time. Because <laughs> I the road less traveled. <laughs> it's really interesting because it in seems the very the counter. There, there they are with the tools <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> It's very counterintuitive, isn't it? You know, you're not expecting it. And then, you know, there it is. Life, um, what, what is amazing to me is, in fact, it, it could be that these wonderful experiences are exactly the life lesson that you need at this point. Like, it seems like Elle is going to hell, <laughs> but actually it's, it, it's good. You're stuck for a day and a half in your driveway. Fortunately, a friend of yours had called a few days ago and had trouble with her RV. And so I told Jessica, we're signing up for the most expensive roadside assistance on the planet, bar none. Get us the best. And on yeah. the second day after the first day, I was taking a pickaxe and a shovel trying to get myself out to, to remove a hill. <laughs> the second day, I'm <laughs> calling the troops. But we finally get out. We get to Vegas and we're late and we're just going to stay overnight and go. And a guy comes running out of his RV and he goes, you got a 399th, I got a 399th, almost nobody has a 399th, if you'll stay around, I'll tell you how to run everything on it. Oh, <gasps> oh, how lucky. And you go, thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> the being stuck in the desert was exactly the right thing. And so you got to drop the judgment on any of it, which isn't necessarily easy, even if something's boo-booed. You got to drop the judgment. You just don't know what's going to come out of it. You know, I, um, I've been, uh, I, I, as things go with me, things kind of just walk in the door. So I've been, I've been basically living as a high end monk, meaning like, you know, I don't live uh, on a, a little tatami mat. You know, I don't live in the mountains. I don't have any like arduous chores and gardening and such. I just basically, you know, go to Whole Foods, grab my latte, and meditate. You know, so like I've been it. living. I'm living as a high end monk. I think over the last, um, oh, during the COVID, and I've been working, but like mostly it's just like meditating and trying to like heal and use that time for an inner journey. And so things have came things kind of have been walking in the door. And I think I told you last time that one of them was Amazon. And then this other group um, came in and has asked me to do work on some leadership training. So that seems to be the, the dish du jour that is being brought to me. And, you know, I don't know why, but the gal who um, um, I'm coaching for and, and Amazon said, or and been contracted, subcontracted to work for said, you know, I really need you to take this leadership assessment. So, you know, I, I had a month, so I signed up for this class. And then this new group was like, I need really need you to take a leadership assessment. And I was like, mm -hmm. another class? I'm like, okay, um, given the timing of when we would like you to, you know, t present this, it has to be this week. And I was like, that's right before my other leadership <laughs> class. So for the last two weeks, I've been sitting on Zoom, which is so dreadful. I can't even tell you for being sitting all the time for your body. But I've had two weeks of like waking up because everyone is on a different time zone. They're not in the West Coast. So I'm waking up at 630 in the morning, sitting, watching these leadership training classes. And so I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also a little bit dreading about this class. Is and there such a thing as a, this is going to sound crazy, a, like a, uh, I know they have VR goggles. Is there such a thing as a pair of glasses you can wear that has a heads up display on it 
where you could have like a quarter of an a quarter of the eye or something see zoom so you could go for a walk or something and still be present in a zoom call i that's exactly what i would like to do because uh, you know the problem is is that I, I've done that a couple times when I've met with friends and it's very distracting because they see a moving background and yep. so they don't they want to see you but they don't want to see a moving background um, so then you could switch off your video but then it's like well why are we on zoom why wouldn't we make this a phone call so I'm seeing a headband with a little selfie stick sticking out that comes back on you that does the whole green screen thing that zoom does yeah that would work because seriously, it, is, it was so painful just sitting there. Like my body's a little bit I'm messed up. so with you and so <laughs> done with sitting at the moment. And the closest you'll get me is out on the deck because we've got this thing for a beautiful studio inside. Jessica's like, do you want to use the studio today? No. <laughs> well, how about no? <laughs> what about no? <laughs> outside will not go in <laughs> well you know so well so this leadership class i didn't really know they have you take all these assessments and i um get a debrief on both of them and and you know i'm going through the class just like you know going through the motions of learning and stuff and then it just like i'm not expecting it to be like a personal healing journey and it ends up being that where Ooh. I'm recognizing like it brought up all sorts of issues about what kind of leader I would like to be myself, how I'm leading um, with my family and how it can actually um, evolve now that they're older. And then also when I'm brought into a classroom, my um, Asian competitive side in the classroom setting comes up and I just, it's like, uh, I have to know all the information. I have to know it really well. I have to be like an A student and I have to look smart amongst all these other people that I'm in the classroom with. Yeah. And it's so interesting because it's a pattern that comes very rarely, right? It just, it's not part of my experience. I'm learning every day, but not in that kind of group like fashion. But it was so interesting just seeing all these parts of myself kind of come up and um how it was so opposite of of, of the areas that i've evolved but it, it it brought up this new area of evolution and um healing work because that comes about from being asian because you're always supposed to be smart and you prove your value by being intelligent and so this whole smarty pants persona has i don't think i'm a smarty i've never come across as a smarty pants but being smart and proving your value by that is so ingrained. I don't know if that's part of your Jewish culture or not, but it's definitely part of the Chinese culture. And um, when people don't recognize my intelligence, you know, my great advice or strategy yeah. or whatever it is, I either go into passive resistance, was like, okay, fine, whatever, you know, or go into like, no, I'm going to explain this to you again because <laughs> it's really no. important. I don't know if you've ever had that. That's like my worst coaching moments, right? But it's it's I could see all of this on a chart, um, and I hadn't really recognized how um, those things operated, and how when you are going and spending your energy investing on either being passive, which is like this mm -hmm. kind of drain of energy. Or being autocratic, which is like, you know, a kind of, you know, going out there and like pointing your fingers and getting all, you know, big, um, either getting big or small or being smart. It's just like a, it's just burning up all of your energy to make this happen versus just sitting there and being present. I, I really saw that like showing up in those other ways, which is so typical in a corporate setting. Um, how much energy it burns up and um, how when you go back to your center and go back into your core identity, which is your godlike self, there's like, you know, your spiritual self is like, you don't know anything to begin with. <laughs> Let's get clear. <laughs> it's, it's like, I just don't know and I don't need to know. And uh, when I need to know, I'll find out. And so it was just interesting to see, like, the use of ener loss of energy from trying to be the smart one and trying to figure everything out. Um, so it was a huge, uh, like, a, a, a awakening of, of 
like just little fragments that have been missing in my, and then the pain of um, like right before you called, I was meditating and surprisingly, I just started crying in my meditation because mm -hmm. I was, I was diving into where this comes from and it comes from my brother always being smarter than me. Oh. You know, like he went to Harvard, I went to Duke, yeah. you know, he went to <laughs> Yale, I went to University of California, Berkeley, like he was just, you know, like incrementally smarter in every single way, perfect SATs, you know, won the spelling bee, like, you know, head, heads up this gigantic division at GE. So he's always been that kind of guy and the pain that that feels to just constantly competing against that. And so I was just crying. I mean... Um, when that happens, there's, it's so painful to not be that person because you feel like you don't val you're not valued. Um, yeah. And so I, I just got clear to me, like we do all these crazy things basically because we want love mm -hmm. and, um, it's just, yeah. This I interviewed Gary Z <coughs> Zukoff, um, yeah. last week. Oh, Incredible wow. Incredible interview. Yeah. And, uh, you know, author of Seed of the Soul and he became, Basically, I'll, I'll use this term. I don't know if he would a mercenary mm. for um, he was on uh, in an A team um, special forces team in Vietnam War wow. where they were uh, dropped into Laos behind enemy lines. If they ever were discovered, the U.S. would deny their existence to set up tripwire devices so that when vehicles came through down the supply lines, they would be seen by camera and uh uh, U.S. planes would go in and kill a whole bunch of people. And so he was killing a lot of people, in essence, to be loved, to be accepted, mm. to be told you're a good person. Right, because you're protecting so, the U.S. or whatever. Yeah. And, 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 and so what we do out of this desire to be, to be loved and to be looked up to, I mean, I, I, I have nothing really to complain about, but I can remember working my tail off to be that straight A student and the this and the that. And um, I, I think before I graduated or went to college, I'd have been accepted a year early, all this good stuff. I think my mom came to me. I was like sitting on the couch, which is almost completely unheard of, and slapped down a thing about Bill Gates and said, why can't you be more like him? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there was no meeting. <laughs> The level of standards, and that's what's going on in your mind, or went on in your mind. Yes, too. yeah. How can you beat the perfect SATs? You can't. Right now, we're looking at, and the big question we're asking ourselves. And Jessica was was meeting with a dear friend of ours in Colorado a week or two weeks ago, who was saying Michael needs to slow down. And all of a sudden, in the house, the lights dimmed down and went off <laughs> for about a full pot of breath, and then came back. And, and the discussion was Michael needs to slow down or there'll be another cosmic two by four. Oh, no. And I feel like that was the rush to get out and the rush in Colorado where we had very little time and trying to consolidate four storage units to two and, and two extra cars and get rid of them was very high paced. Now we're on the other side of that. And I'm going, yeah, I can take time on the couch. Yeah, I can take time and step back. And looking at what is the, is there an addiction? What is the addiction with the, I need to get stuff done? What really needs to get done? And incredibly challenging myself to say, how much less can I do, which I want to do more? And there's, therein lies the addiction piece of it. Right. But I want to find a way to be more efficient. Out on the road, it becomes very clear if I'm here in this campground working 10, 12, 14 hour days, I'm insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. that's just not going to happen. And so we get to, as you're doing, pull these strings that say, I have to do this. I have to be that. I have to succeed here. I have to do the other thing. What do I really need? What right. would really make me happy? Right. And just the amount of energy that you're spending um, when in fact everything is okay. And if you didn't mm -hmm. do that, if you sat on the couch and did nothing, it actually would probably bring more to, to you and your sense of self than any additional thing that you could be doing. Jessica and I, uh, inadvertently, it was just following the flow. And this show could also be calling, called Following the Flow Line. We ended up at 
uh, the bean and wine coffee shop yesterday. Oh, yeah, and I know that place. She, she was so amazed that I just sat with her and just bead with her on the couch. Oh, sweet. And just sweet. hung out on the couch. She's like, I'm so shocked you would do this. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, Rue, get off. <laughs> I the need to the couch. Well, this, this is the coffee shop couch. The most oh. decadent thing that I could do in the world right now would be to go into the bedroom and just sit on the bed for a while and just be. To just let go. It's all going to take care of itself. And just be. Mm. That's a perfect way to close because I've done that several times this week where I've been taking class and I'm like, I'm tired. Right now, I'm tired. I'm taking a nap right now. And those 10 to 15 minute pauses are so rejuvenating. So rejuvenating. So, on that note, you're going to have about a 30 second pause after this before yes. we dive into the next meeting. <laughs> so, I want to thank you for making the time, CJ, on such short notice. Or did I make the time on such short notice? Who knows? We both did. And I'm thrilled that I'm so glad to see you. And, um, Keep the faith, Michael. It's but and slow down, for sure. We're slowing down. We're slowing down. We're going to slow down some more. And this RV says, "I want to sit for two to four weeks at a time." And I go, "Okay, we'll make that happen." Yeah, it's going to happen. South Dakota. I don't know if that's where you're planning to be, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> We're in South Dakota now. It'd be nice to get to some place with water. We've got a kayak that's that's itching to hit the water. Um, and then we'll get back to visit Jessica's family. She wants to be in the East Coast for months. My guess is she's going to hit that humidity wall, and it's going to be a very short-lived Because <laughs> <laughs> she's calling South Dakota humid right now, and that's like 10 15%, but compared to the desert, yeah. that's a wall of humidity. Just going to let go. <laughs> <sighs> Any last words, CJ? Um, happy trails. You're on the Camino of RVing. <laughs> So for everyone out there, do just like this or whatever is your version. Find the flow, let go, let go some more, laugh, cry, let go, explore, <laughs> laugh, rinse and repeat. <laughs> Shine bright. Woohoo!